All right, so today I'd like to go over some of the steps needed to containerize your Rust application. Let's get it. All right, so before we get started, let me show you where my starting point is. So I'll go to my terminal, and I just have a generic web application um, based on warp. So here's Rust, log, trace, cargo run, and as you can see, it starts up a server, uh, localhost 3030. So let me open that real quick. And that more or less just renders this. Cool? Cool. So in terms of trying to containerize our application, one place we can go is Docker Hub. So on the Docker Hub site, you can find a language, well, Rust in this case, and it will give you the basic instructions of how to containerize your application. So if we scroll down to about here, they give you some basic instructions. You have the, well, basic instructions for the Docker file. Um, you have the from, which is the base container that you're creating your application from. Here they have Rust version 1.31, which is rather old, at least in comparison to what's out now. Um, you have your working directory, which is the, the directory that's going to be used in the container. So you could just have everything be here. You have copy, which is copying everything from on the host in that directory, dot, because dot is this directory, to the other dot, which is the working directory, which you just set. So copying all of your contents to this directory. Here they have run cargo install path dot. And this dot, I believe, works on the working directory. So more or less, this is going to install slash build your application uh, with a released optimized build in the container. And then because it's installed in your path, if you want to run your application, all you have to do is command the name of the application. Um, and then down here, once you have this Docker file, they give you the basic steps needed to create an image and then create a container to run that image or create a container based off that image. Um, they have the command via Docker. So you have Docker build dash T my Rust app dot. And I think the dash T is for a tag. Yeah, the dash T is for tag. And what that's going to do is that when you create your image, your image is going to have a name. And the tag is going to be part of that name. So you can just use it later. And the dot is for the current directory that you're working in. They should just find the Docker file in there, given that it's named properly. And then after that, you could run your application um, via this command, which is docker run dash it. I believe is for interactive. T, make sure that the container has a terminal, like a TTY. Um, dash dash rm means remove once the container stops running. So while it is running, it is fine. As soon as it is stopped, it will be destroyed. Name. Name is used so that you have a name to call your application by. So you, when you want to stop it, the container, you could stop it via using the name instead of just the has ID. And then this is the name of the image, I believe. All right, so we're more or less going to go through these instructions, but I do have a caveat. Personally, I don't use Docker. Um, I use Podman, mainly because I find it to be slightly more secure. And let me give you a quick introduction to what Podman is. Uh, so Podman is a con Docker alternative. Uh, Podman is a daemonless container engine for developing, managing, and running OCI containers on your Linux system. Containers can either be run as root or in rootless mode. Um, and one of the things that they do for marketing is they sh say that the API is more or less identical to Docker. It's not completely identical, but all the basics are there. Anyway, so let's go back to the application. I can show you what I did in terms of my files. So go back to the terminal. Turn this off. And there we go. There's my Docker file. Let me open that real quick. So in my Docker file, it is almost identical to what they have in theirs. However, there are some slight differences. 
First being, I updated the version of Rust I want to use. Second being, this is the name of my application, so that has been updated. Um, everything else is more or less the same, given the, the translation, but I did uh, add an environment variable. Um, and I added the environment variable because I want to see my logs. And the way you add environment variables in your Docker file is env, and then you can do the name of the environment variable and then the value. I mean, there's a few other ways of going about it because the syntax is pretty flexible. I think there's like three, but this is just one of the ways to go about doing that. And then, so let's exit out of this. So the next step is to build the container, right? Oh no, build the image. And personally, I wrote out steps to do this. So let me go to my repo and look at my steps. Do, do, do. Yeah, so that's my first step is right here. And the tag I went with is website. So as you can see, the command is more or less identical to the Docker one. And this could take a while because it's it's building. So let's make this big so you can see it. Oh, um, you can see on the screen now uh, the cargo install finish, and it is an optimized build. For a while, I was really curious as to whether or not it was optimized or not, and it took me a while to find this and the documentation that covered it. But yes, um, cargo install will optimize your build. All right, so the command has finished running. Um, let me go back to my instructions real quick. So if you want to view your image, if the command to do that, it'd be podman image ls, and it's the same command for Docker. Um, as you can see here, this is the image that I just created. They did add localhost in front of website, so that is the name I'm going to be using for my following commands. But anyway, you should always check to see the name of the image that you created. All right. Oh. Yes, I should cover that too. So if you want to destroy the image, then you can do remove and then pass in the image name. But going on to the container portion of it. So here's my command that I'm going to use for the container. And it's slightly different from what was in the uh, Docker Hub command list or the Docker Hub page. So going back to Docker Hub page, they have the dash IT, dash dash RM, dash dash name, and then the name of the image, right? Given that my application is a web application, I've added a dash P, short for publish, where I have the host port that I'm going to be using to, and then the uh, container port that I'm going to be connecting that host port to. So for me, when I run the application, I should be able to go to my local host 8080, and it will connect to the container's um, port of 3030. So let me just copy and paste this. Also, it should be noted that the name I'm using for my container is longer than the one they were using for theirs. That might be a Podman thing. I'm not sure. I didn't try this with Docker. Anyway, let's give this a run. All right, so it looks like the application is running. And... I change you to 8080. I can see from the logs that the application has been hit and it was rendered. All right. So those are more or less the steps to get your container, uh, to get your application containerized. Um, the one thing to note is I added the environment variable to the Docker file. And the reason why I did that is so I could see this. I can see my logs. And if I want to, I can pipe it someplace else and write them to a file. So now that your container is running and your application is running within that container, you might want to know how to stop it. So to stop the container, um, given that I am running the container in, not in the background as a daemon, just in the foreground, I need to open another terminal or at least another space where I can run the command to stop it. 
and you stop it by doing Docker or Podman, stop, and then the name of, that you tagged your container with. And I tagged mine with website. So for me, I can copy and paste this, show copy. I can come back to my terminal, create a new section, and then run the command podman stop website. And then as you can see, the website has stopped. And up here in this process, it is no longer running as well. And true to the Dasta SRM, if we did podman ps dash a for all, um, and this this command shows you all of the uh, containers that you have, you can see that the container website is not here because it was destroyed once it was stopped. So with that, we've come to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit like, subscribe, yada yada yada. Outside of that, till next time, peace.